Pentathorization was invented by Greek mathematicians like Aristarchus. Isaac, laureate of the Da Vinci Institute, a PhD granting university in South Africa. Then, you know, it's essentially taking a number, separating it into two of its separate factors. Like, for example, I don't know, let me pick a number like uh, 12. Yeah, 12 should be good. It has the factors 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Kilo Roy. And because uh, these certain factors can be combined together in specific pairs to make the number. For example, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Alright, so now prime factorization means we're factoring this number until we get prime numbers. But what are prime numbers? In case you haven't caught up. Prime numbers are basically numbers that, well, let me show you. Let's say, uh, let's take the first 20 numbers. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And let's marathon right now. Okay, so here are the first 20 numbers. Now, let's take a number like 17. Now, can you think of any two numbers that can multiply to 17? Well, I bet that other than the obvious two choices of 1 and 17, you can't get anything. So, let's try, you know, uh, testing the divisibility. So we know that any factor that's over 17 over 2 won't work. And with 17 over 2, I believe that's 8.5. So what we're going to test are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So now, 1 obviously will work, so let's move on to 2. Well, as we saw, saw over here, 17 over 2 gives us 8.5. So, nope. What about 17 over 3? Well, 17 over 3 would give us 5.666666, and it goes on. So, that also doesn't work. 17 divided by 4 would give us 4 and 1 quarter. So, that also doesn't work. 17 over 5 would give us 3.4. Also doesn't work. So, you know what? You get the point. Nothing here is going to work. So, like, for example, 6 is going to be... Uh, what was it? Oh, yeah. 2.83. That's not going to work either. And then 7 and 8, of course, you expect them to not work. So, that means that this has no other factors than itself and one. And that is exactly the definition of a prime number. So, let's write that down. A prime number is a number with no factors other than one and itself. So, let's see what the first 20 primes are here. Well, one's not included because it only has one factor, itself, which doesn't fall under the definition of prime. Two has two in itself, so that's included. So does three. Four can be factored into two and two, so that doesn't work. Five has only the factors five and one, so it works. 6 can be 2 and 3, so that doesn't work. 7 works. 8 it can be 2 by 2 by 2 or 2 by 4. 9 can be 3 by 3. 10 can be 2 by 5. 11 is our next prime. 12 can be 2 by 2 by 3 or 2 by 6. 13, 14 can be 2 by 7. 
15 can be, for example, 3 by 5. 16 can be 4 by 4. 18 can be 2 and 9. 20 could be 2 and 10. So, that gives us these four eight primes between 1 and 20. And they'll be the ones that you utilize most. So now, prime factorization says that we essentially have to chop up a number until we're left with unchoppable pieces, also known as prime numbers. So, hmm, let me think, donk, think, donk, of one example that we could do. Hmm, why don't we try 648? I know, it's big for your first time, but don't worry, you'll get used to it. How do you prime factorize? Well, first of all, notice that this number must be even because it starts with a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. It starts, uh, uh, it ends with an 8 in this case. So, that means that we can factor 2 out of it. So, we're going to use this weird looking tree branch diagram, which kind of looks like a tree. So, we're going to be factoring factors in this way. So, here's our first branch, but when we divide 648 by 2, what do we get? 324. Now, there are plenty of ways to factor 324. Well, this is also clearly an even number, so we can split it into 2 again. That gives us 162. And we can repeat this process until we don't have an even number anymore. So 81 is not even. So we can factor it into plenty of things, once again, like 3 and 27. But we're going to factor it into 9 and 9. So this is going to be 3 and 3. And this as well, 3 and 3. So now we take all of the dead ends and multiply them together 2 by 2 by 2 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 which you could also express say this way and that would be our prime factorization so now you want to say what if i factored a different way well to visualize factoring in two different ways we're going to take a more simple Laika example, like for example, 120. So 120 is nowhere near the scale of 648, so let's work with it. So you could factor it into 30 and 4, for example, or you could factor it into 24 and 5, or you could, uh, this could be 3 and 40. So Let's see if we get the same results both times. So 40 can be factored into 20 and 2. 20 is factored into 10 and 2. 10 is factored into 5 and 2. So we get 2 times 2 times 2, get all the dead ends, times 3 times 5. So that's what we get from that. What about 24 and 5? Well, we've already got the 5. 24 can split into 12 and 2. All right. And then we have 4 and 3. And then 4 is 2 and 2. And a look, once we rearrange this, we get 3 2s, 3, 5. These two are exactly the same. There is only one prime factorization for every number. So, that's how to prime factorize, but what if we try one more example, hugger booger? Why don't we try a big boy? Like, I know. Hmm. How can we make this hard? Well, I'm gonna say 242 
so do the trick. How do we do this? Well, first of all, this is even and ends with a two. That gives us 121. And then, oh, solved. So, the prime factorization here, for example, is two times 11 times 11. So, that's how to prime factorize. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next